Hello, my lovely friends. It's Kiki Hermetic Kitten, and today I am here for a very, very, very special video where I will be answering your questions for me. With this video, you will get to know about me, and um, I will also make some sounds so that you can just sit back and relax. I am making this video as a um, celebration for <coughs> a very very special Patreon milestone that I reached. So thank you so much for your support. And um, before starting with the video, I want to do something else. If you need new headphones, I highly recommend this brand that I have shown in other videos, but never in English. They're called Mezzi. And these are um, a special model called Deco 11. This is a young company from Romania. And um, they were actually so kind to me. And I want to thank you so much, Mezzi headphones for being so nice to me. And I wish I could do more for you. So, they sent me these headphones um, with this beautiful case and they are design headphones, very very beautiful, elegant and at the same time they are very functional and I think headphones are the main thing for an ASMR to listen to ASMR videos so they were so kind to send one pair to me uh, to try them for you and I fell in love with their generosity, but also their kindness um, through email, and I wish I could do more for them, so why not helping a young brand grow? Because I guess they have many, many different ideas for new models, and they will mm, develop them, so these are the headphones that I have shown. See how beautiful the logo is? and. Um, they have a part in silicone. Um, the sound is very, very natural. It doesn't hurt your ears one bit. And um, as you can see, they're really, really, really nice. I don't know. I really, really fell in love with them and I wish I could do more for them. So if you need a new pair of headphones, <coughs> please, please consider. Meze headphones and I will leave the link down below if you have further questions or you want to check them out. Okay, so I guess we can start with the video now. And I want to start off by thanking you so much for all the help that you have provided for me. I always have the feeling that you do way more for me than I do for you with my videos. Por cierto, para todas aquellas personas que hablan español, voy a hacer una versión de este video muy pronto donde voy a hablar sobre mí y voy a contestar algunas preguntas que me han estado haciendo. The first question that you ask me, always, 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 is How many languages do you speak? Where are you from? Where do you live? So we'll be answering this right now. And in the meantime, I'm going to make sounds with this beautiful, beautiful necklace that I bought last week in a small town in Catalonia. Okay, how many languages do I speak? So I speak Italian, Spanish, English, French, a little bit of Dutch, and a little bit of Catalan that I am learning now, a little, little, little bit of Japanese. 
So where I come from? I was born in Rome, Italy in 1990, so I am 24. This is also another question that you've asked me a lot of times. Um, I'm 24, my mother is from Venezuela, and my father was Italian. Um, he died uh, last month. It's very recent, and it was the the ending of a very long and sad story that I won't share right now but I will maybe share it with you at a later moment so my mom, as I was saying, was born in Venezuela but she had um, Italian parents so she is of Italian as well she never uh, spoke Spanish with me directly, but she was uh, speaking Spanish with my father, who was replying in Italian dialect, Italian, from the south my father is from uh, Salerno, which is in the south of Italy and my mom is from Caracas, Venezuela so I am actually bilingual even though I learned Spanish at school and I have a mix of um, Spanish uh, from Spain and Spanish from Latin America which is sometimes very confusing for people or for myself then I learned by myself English and then at school um, and then I took translation at university and I basically got to learn more English with time progressing but I did most of it by myself then uh, the first language I have ever studied in my life was French I've been studying French uh, since I was eight years old and then I uh, left it a little bit because I was focusing more on Spanish and English mais j'aime bien les français, je l'aime beaucoup Et je sais que je dois pratiquer plus. Donc je vais faire plus de vidéos ASMR en français dans le futur. Um, I really, really love French. It's a beautiful language and I really hope I can practice more. Then I started learning some Dutch, actually some French from Belgium most of the Dutch speaking viewers of my channel always ask me why I seem to have more of a Belgian accent than a Dutch accent and that is because I've only traveled to Belgium and that's where I learned the little Dutch that I speak and so far I can say really weird things like het lucht in de soep or de maatschappij or Helaas, um, pinda kaas. And um, last time I was in Kortrijk, I found a book of poems written by Guido Gisele, and I really enjoyed trying to read ancient Dutch, which I seem to understand more than Dutch itself. And the uh, first poem went like. Der that was the name I hope I pronounced it well so yeah I hope we will be able to learn more Dutch or Flemish um, in the future I want to travel to the Netherlands too to visit Amsterdam, Holland so yeah and then Catalan. I am learning Catalan because I recently moved, uh, well, recently, six months ago, I moved to Barcelona, Spain. And they have this language, Catalan. Truly beautiful, very similar to some Italian dialects that I have listened to when I was a little girl. 
and so I am slowly learning some of it. Unfortunately, I don't feel comfortable enough to speak it yet, but I understand part of it. And I um, seem to understand the, ri the written Catalan, so that is really good. I hope I can improve. Um, what can I say in Catalan? Molt bé. Merci, adeu, bon dia. Yeah, these things. But I'm very shy because whenever I don't know a language very well, I tend to be shy. And then some Japanese. Nihongo wa sukoshi I understand a little bit of Japanese and um, I can say the basics. Arigato gozaimasu. Um, Ohayo gozaimasu. And also weird things like Ano wo sumimasu ni pasupoto ga uchimashita yo. Hey you, your passport just fell down. I don't know why I can say these things. But yeah, I hope I can improve the level very soon. Maybe take a course of Japanese. And uh, yeah. So another question that you always ask me is how do you stay positive? Uh, through hard times to just stay positive, you know. And um, this is a very, very interesting question for me because although I might seem always very relaxed, I am actually very prone to anxiety and uh, feeling stressed. So yeah, um, anxiety and stress have been with me most of my life, actually. And um, after a very traumatic experience I had, I decided to look for help. And that was a major accomplishment for me because I understood more about myself. I read a lot of books about the topic and I started understanding what was happening to me. I also uh, turn to spirituality, that is why my name is Hermetic Kitten. I have studied a lot of esotericism, hermeticism, and um, that helped me a lot. Um, you have to find your own path to happiness. Uh, you have to find your own call, so to say, or it is that special something that is going to find you. So you don't have to force anything. But if you deeply want to change inside your heart, it doesn't matter how old you are. Some people say after a certain age you cannot change. I don't agree with that because I have seen people changing at every age and every phase of their lives. Of course it is more difficult to change if you're a grown-up, but it, it doesn't make any sense to say that people don't change. People change if they want to. You only need to be very humble and be ready to analyze yourself. So I, how do I stay positive? I do not always manage to stay positive, but what I do is I try to take some time for myself to recover from the stress and to um, think more clearly about everything. And I try to find the bright side of that situation. I try to understand what is it that my inner being wants. And that is how I stay positive. You help me a lot. In fact, ASMR is um, part of my therapy, my self-therapy. It's a self-help thing that I do for myself and for you. And I am so glad that you seem to enjoy this video so much. And you have no idea how much you help me dealing with myself. 
Um, as far as my personal story, I don't want to share too much because I don't think um, it is fair for you to listen to all the things that happened in my life. But um, there have been some very difficult experiences and that means that if you are going through a rough time, I can probably understand, if not all of it, most of it, because I've probably been there myself. So I don't want you to listen to sad stories because you need to relax and it's not a place and time right now. But do know that everything will get better. It doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't happen in a flash, but eventually it happens. Life can change. Life can be beautiful. Life can give you everything that has been taken away from you. Even though now, no matter how bad you feel or how hopeless you feel, try to grip to that hope and things are going to come your way. That is why I'm so obsessed with positive thinking. Because you have no idea how much you have helped me with my life, with my own happiness, just by being there for me. And I want to be that person who is always going to be there for you. No matter what, I will always believe in you. I will always be your friend. Comfort is so important in life. To feel comforted from stress, from anxiety, to feel soothed, to allow yourself to feel soothed. So I want to be that presence for you. I want to be that one person who is always going to be here for you and you can always turn to whenever you need it. This is what I want to be. So thank you for helping me understand this and thank you for letting me in in your life. So yeah, the path to happiness is not easy, it doesn't happen overnight, it takes effort, but eventually it will pay you back. So now you have to reverse the cycle, or if you are on the right path, you have to stay focused and believe in your dream, believe that you are made to be great, you are bound to be great. This is what you need to do, and this is what I want to help you doing. About Patreon, um, some people have asked me how, um, how is it, how am I finding myself in this new Patreon thing? And although some of you might think that Patreon is not really related to my Yezuma channel, it is. Uh, people on Patreon are not just uh, people, they are my friends and um, they give me uh, ideas for new videos. I try to maintain a very special relationship with my friends on Patreon and um, this is allowing me to transform my ASMR dream into something bigger and um, if I can afford to buy new equipment and make better videos, improve the quality, it is because of this support. So if you cannot support um, even with one dollar, you should definitely subscribe to get some special content from me. Because I don't mind, I don't care about the amount of money. It is just a symbol to participate to this great ASMR dream. And for me, it's fantastic. I enjoy uh, writing letters and postcards and um, making drawings and it is such a beautiful, loving experience for me and I want to thank every patron so much for all the help and the affection that you've been giving me. And I want to give you the stars and the moon and everything. You have no idea how much you've done for me. And every single viewer on YouTube is as important for me as every patron. So yes, if you want to contribute to this ASMR dream, subscribe to Patreon, just support me. 
and you will get a lot of tingles back. I hope. I will keep on trying to make better videos and to buy new things to make videos um, and to find new ideas. I just feel like I have so many ideas. So yes, I really hope I can improve and give you better quality and better support. I've also thought about um, studying some topics as um, as far as psychology or spirituality in order to find new techniques or approaches to help you and uh, I want I really want to improve with everything and learn new languages ah, another very um, frequent question is how do I learn a new language? You have been asking me this for a long time. And the answer is, you need to understand that whenever you want to learn a language, the first thing you need to do is fall in love with it. Just as you would be falling in love with a wonderful man or woman. Uh, you have to fall in love with it because we have something called filter. In linguistics, we call it filter. When the filter is higher, it is like having a wall in front of you. So for example, if your teacher is too strict or your parents are forcing you to learn a language, your filter will probably go higher and higher and higher and it will be so difficult to just uh, learn the language. But if your filter lowers because you love the language, you get passionate about it, you start uh, watching TV series, reading books, you start um, giving so much input of the language in your brain, then you're going to learn faster and faster and faster. And you have no idea how powerful it can be. This happened to me uh, numerous times. And imagine that, for example, in Spanish, at university in Rome, I had a very strict teacher. He was so obsessed with grammar that I was, oh my god, so scared to uh, try and speak Spanish because I knew that the moment I opened my mouth, I would make a mistake. So my level just dropped and dropped and dropped. But Spanish is my second language, so it didn't make sense for me. And gradually I started listening to input videos or movies in Spanish, I read a lot of Borges and I understood that my level was fine, that I only needed to relax. So the first thing you need to do when learning a language is relaxing. Relaxing and fall in love with it. Do everything in your uh, possibilities to fall in love with it, even travel to the country if you can afford it. Um, it is really worth it. But the first thing you need to do is really not um, being overly obsessed with the grammar. Try to have a communicative approach uh, in the sense that you should try to communicate. Uh, learn first the things that will be more useful, like good morning, how are you, how can I do this, where is the station, how can I go there? And then you will integrate the grammar and all the structures that you will need. Then, as a, another step, you will try to write and you will correct here and there some things, but just take it very um, communicatively. Try to communicate with the people from the country and allow them to help you with your level. So yeah, um, another question that you've been asking me is, what do you do in your spare time? What do you like doing? What are your hobbies? Okay, you should know that I'm really like a cat. I love people, but I am often a loner. I like to spend time by myself. I need time to write and paint and relax and have conversations with myself. I really need it to be uh, alone for a long while since I was a little girl and um, I think it is crucial for an introvert like me to have some time to just be 
with himself. And this is what I do. I like uh, writing a lot, reading a lot. I love reading in every language. I like painting, even though I'm not really wonderful at it, but I like painting. I like sketching. I like visual art, listening to music. A few people know that I play electric guitar. I recently bought a classic one and um, I'm not a great musician but it tells me um, relaxing a lot and um, I also love listening to metal music and um, my favorite gents of metal are Thrash Death, so Municipal Waste, Holy Moses, um, and um, also doom metal, black metal. I have a lot of favorite bands. And um, this is a, a strange fact about myself because I can be so dark in style, but at the same time I am obsessed with relaxation and I am so focused on light. But at the same time I really love Satyricon and um, other bands, Belfagor, I really like this type of music. This section, um, Celtic Frost, Dark Throne, Mayhem, I really love this type of music. I love Bjork, I love Nirvana. I love grunge, really, that music is great. So this is the other side of me. I've always been a metalhead since I can remember, since I was 14. And um, I've had bands even though I was so bad at playing at that time. And I remember having this band, we would play Green Day, No FX, um, and I was so bad at it but I had the best time of my life because the problems hadn't started yet my life was okay when I was in high school and um, that was the time of my life so if the guys I used to play with uh, ever watch this video I want to say hi to you and thank you for Give me one of the best times of my life, even though I was so bad at it. I really miss that spontaneity and innocence and freshness in general. Thank you so much. And I think I've replied to my mostly asked questions. Oh, I have another one. Um, my natural hair color because you saw me very blonde and now you see me sort of um, brownish so my natural hair color is this one that you see at the top it's brownish but for a long time I, I've been dyeing my hair blonde 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 very pale blonde because I needed light and I felt so much um, darkness inside my own being that I needed to look light. I wanted my skin to be as pale as possible. I would wear black makeup and it would really contrast with my almost white hair. But since I arrived in Spain, I've been feeling the need to be more natural. So this is what my natural hair look like. And I really like like this. I think it looks great and um, I feel better in general about myself. Um, I also had my hair dyed purple once, uh, really purple like this type of purple. Really this purple, it was hilarious. It was my punkish period and um, I dyed it very very uh, dark when I was sick. I didn't mention that I had um, an illness in 2009 
a lung illness and I was operated from it and that was one traumatic experience uh, it took me a long time to recover mentally from this problem and um, I basically connect the dark hair color to being ill that's why I cannot dye them black because it's too much for me in fact my reaction was to dye them blonder and blonder but now I found I think a balance between the two and I, I think it looks good another thing is um, a lot of people having trouble with themselves uh, as to accept their bodies and accept their their own beings have been asking me how I cope with that how do I accept and love myself that is another very very interesting question and um, the thing that I need to tell you is if you have been feeling bad about yourself please seek help because that makes such a huge difference I was my worst enemy I've always been my worst enemy for a long time I didn't I didn't love myself, I didn't accept myself as I was, I hated myself. But little by little, I uh, decided to try and try, really try to be my best friend. And it doesn't always um, happen because it takes a lot of effort to revert the cycle. It, it, it feels as if you've been um, going in one direction all your life and the more you go the more you gain velocity and it's quicker and quicker and quicker and at a certain moment you stop and you need to revert the process you know what I mean so what you need to do is take that bad feeling that you have about yourself that is so so quick and try to slow it down try just to slow it down and as it slows down allow yourself to analyze the feelings and the emotions attached to it try to understand why you have so much uh, hatred for yourself and as you slow down at a certain moment one day it will happen that you will be completely still and that is the time where you need to make an effort and pedal in the opposite direction try just one step at a time to revert the process until you start and you start and you will go quicker and quicker and quicker and quicker and quicker and the process will be reversed and you will start appreciating yourself more and appreciating your efforts more if you're looking for somebody who is going to change your life you should look at yourself in the mirror you are the only one who can achieve a great change in your own life you are the only one who can help you through life and who will be by your side forever so try no matter how bad you feel just try to slow down the process every little step is worth it doesn't happen overnight take your time and when you're still force yourself and go in the other direction this is the best advice I can give you and another thing I can assure you is that I will always be here for you you are not alone I will be with you every step of the road I will never leave you alone I will comfort you and tell you how amazing you are this is why I believe in positive thinking so much because you mean the world to me and I want you to realize how special you are how talented you are how creative you are how incredible your power is and unlimited you are bound to be great and I will always be here to remind you of that okay I think I uh, answered um, my mostly request questions and if you have more questions why don't you write them down and I will answer them in the next video like this one this has been the video where I've talked 
more I think so far so if you liked it please let me know and I will consider doing um, making more videos like this one basically it is very spontaneous and um, I really really enjoy it so thank you so much for relaxing with me and I hope these little advices helped you and uh, thank you once more to all my wonderful friends here on YouTube and on Patreon for giving me that affection and that awesome magic that I've been looking for for so long you are so special thank you for being so special thank you for being so special and thank you for being so special bye bye see you in the next video Ciao.